Have you ever, have you guys ever heard of the term virtual intelligence? Have you guys ever heard of that? So virtual intelligence was a buzzword around like 2015 to 2018. And virtual intelligence was the name given to like a lot of systems you guys probably know. So like Bixby, the Google one, which is just Google, I guess. Google, Bixby, Alexa, Siri? Is that all of them? Oh, Cortana. So those 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 like systems that are on your phone and the reason why they were called virtual intelligence is because at the time word ai was still kind of a scary word to use you know because ai was used in a lot of movies such as like irobot and stuff and the word vir uh, artificial intelligence scared a lot of people so back in like 2015 to 2018 these companies didn't want to use the word AI, so they created a new buzzword called virtual intelligence. So if you Google the word virtual intelligence, it comes up virtual intelligence is the term given to artificial intelligence that exists within a virtual world. So it's kind of like, sort of like an artificial intelligence, I suppose, but it only exists in the virtual world, i.e. the internet. So an artificial intelligence in a lot of movies is like a t an intelligence that's a single unit. So like your computer or like C-3PO or R2-D2 or like, what was that one movie? Ex Machina? You know Ex Machina? That was such a good movie. But like Ex Machina, it was like a singular like android robot that had all of the intelligence. Like she doesn't connect to the internet, right? Like. Uh, R2-D2 doesn't connect to the internet, C-3PO doesn't connect to the internet. They're, they're standalone systems that have the same intelligence as a human, or close to. Anything, though, that is an artificial intelligence that, that exists within a virtual world, which the internet is a virtual world, by the way, is called virtual intelligence. So this was a buzzword that was really big, like, ten years ago. And it's, com well, I guess nine years ago, like nine years ago, and it completely died out and nobody remembers it anymore, which I find really interesting because we're using, we're using artificial intelligence in everything like companies, like now, instead of the YouTube algorithm, they're just calling it like the YouTube artificial intelligence. I feel like all of these new systems like chat GPT and I don't know, whatever, these generative AIs. They're still, you only communicate with them within a virtual world, right? Like, you can't tell ChatGPT to go mow your lawn because it doesn't have a physical form within the physical world. It only exists virtually and it only exists with data sets, if that makes sense. So, I think the reason why a lot of people are scared of artificial, the term artificial intelligence, is because we still have that stigma with all of these old movies that we used to watch, you know? Like, iRobot was a really good one. Hold on, let me look that one up. iRobot. What? Yeah, this movie. Do you remember this movie? That was such a good movie. What is so interesting about these old movies is the fact that, like... The fact that these... These beings don't have internet connection. I think it's so crazy back in the day that in sci-fi... They never thought of like a wireless connection between computers talking, right? Like that is such a concept. That's such an interesting concept that even sci-fi novelists couldn't even comprehend a wireless connection between computers and able and like able to talk, if that makes sense. Detroit Become Human was so good. I love that game. All of these like robots, they don't have connection to the internet. I think what's super scary is if like the fact that we do have like, um, Wi-Fi and internet and wireless communication between devices, I think that makes it even scarier because now instead of these robots being like a singular unit, you know, now instead they can all communicate with each other wirelessly and instantly, which is insane to me. One thing I like to do is like with these buzzwords, so like for example with AI for example, I like to go back and see what people said about AI like nine years ago. So this is a Reddit post nine years ago <laughs> this is a reddit post from nine years ago and the person is asking is there a difference between ai and vi so artificial intelligence and virtual intelligence 
Artificial intelligence is a self-aware, artificially created being that can make crucial decisions and judgment calls in the same manner as intelligent organic life forms. Virtual intelligence is a program, program and or algorithm that can mimic the behavior of life, but is ultimately not self-aware or, uh, or capable of abstract thought. So that, that literally just sounds like chat GPT and all the generative AIs I've ever heard. <laughs> And this is nine years ago. This is what people thought of uh, AI versus BI nine years ago. And then actually, if you Google artificial intelligence versus um, virtual intelligence, um, there's actually a Forbes article right here. Forbes wrote an article. Yeah, we aren't even close to real actual AI. That's very true. It's like, it doesn't exist. Virtual intelligence versus artificial intelligence. What's the difference? And this article was written on March 27th of 2018 at 8.15 a.m. That's wild. This guy wakes up really early to publish his articles. Just in time for people to wake up and drink their coffee and read this article of March 27th of 2018. So this says, with the rise of artificial intelligence, our definitions of certain technologies, processes, uh, certain technological processes are increasingly important. Much like the virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed reality and of are often confused. So what most people call artificial intelligence can be muddled with virtual intelligence. So it says, where are we today? Well, the term virtual intelligence sounds new to you. So, so back then, back in 2018, the word virtual intelligence was a buzzword. It's no longer a buzzword. Nobody, literally nobody remembers this word at all anymore. Like I've asked so many people, what's virtual intelligence? Not a single person remembers. <laughs> Not a single person remembers that virtual intelligence is literally like Cortana, Siri, all of those things. Um, also, like, your Google Maps and stuff, like, all those things. Oh, actually, right here it says, Okay, well, the term virtual intelligence may sound new to you. It's actually been around us for a few, few years. It's present when you open your navigation apps, like Google Maps, or is that Waze? I don't know how to pronounce. I don't know how that's pronounced. When you track your health fitness improvements via Fitbit, um, or you listen to music on a smart speaker like an Alexa Echo. All of these seem intelligent when you react with them on a daily basis. I mean, they can give you directions, recommend dietary, uh, recommend dietary and workout habits, and even respond to spoken commands. But in actuality, these devices are just taking advantage of VI technology or virtual intelligence technology. The inner workings of these devices are also a lot less smart than they might seem. True. Um, although they seem quite scientific, the way in which virtual intelligence works to generate results is scientific because it uses a controlled environment, perceives predetermined factors, and outputs calculated results. So it says virtual intelligence simulates decision making. We say it simulates decision making because it cannot adjust its output as changes are developing. The factors must be given, uh, must be fully developed before it can recalculate the results. For example, if you're using a navigation app, like I mentioned earlier, and you start making a wrong turn, what happens? Well, nothing. The app does not caution you that you're making the wrong turn or update the directions as you are making the wrong turn. It waits until after you have made the decision or after after the turn has been made to recalculate the results and give, in, and give you new input. So that also sounds a lot like chat gpt <laughs> this says the webster definition of artificial intelligence is the capability of a machine to emulate intelligent human behavior and like that also sounds very similar to the what do you call that the the turing test from what i remember the definition of it is and the definition of artificial intelligence pretty much sounds the same key word in this definition is intelligent as we see above, virtual intelligence mimics human decision making by using math and predetermined factors. Artificial intelligence, on the other hand, should be intelligent enough to make decisions as changes and events are occurring. In the future, we hope to see things like transportation, manufacturing, and other areas of everyday life become automated by artificial intelligence. But this can be, in but this can be achieved once AI can start making human-like intelligent decisions that adapt as problems and changes arise. This article was made in 2018. I like the Reddit post. I really like finding old Reddit posts 
that talk about this stuff because it's like... I don't know, because when you're reading Reddit posts, it's it feels like you can actually, like, understand how the people thought of these terms back then, like, nine years ago and stuff. There's so many articles about virtual intelligence. Virtual intelligence is planned, controlled, and predictable, and sharp contract to artificial intelligence is none of these. The word AI is often mistaken with yet another similar element of technology called virtual intelligence, or VI. The two terms are often confused with one another, but note that the difference between the two technologies is indeed vital. You know what I think is super um, interesting about this stuff is because... So, when you think of like virtual intelligence and artificial intelligence... Virtual intelligence is like an intelligence within the virtual world. The virtual world is the internet, you know? The internet is a virtual world. But it's so interesting because... Like right now, we don't have a crossover. Like we don't have like a deep crossover between the two of us, if that makes sense. So like, right now, we can't use AI or like generative AI um, in the real world. You know, like the only glimpse that they get outside of their virtual world into our real world is like if we take a picture of a plant and ask it what kind of plant is this all of the pictures we feed it and stuff but those are still virtual in a sense too like virtual reality is stuck within its own um virtual world of the internet and it can't like come out into our world it's so interesting that it that we're like we're literally blocked like, we're trying to communicate with this computer, with this um, virtual intelligence, artificial intelligence within its virtual world. But, like, as of right now, it's there's no way for it to communicate with us, like, in our real world. Robotics? Okay, so if we had robotics, right, and we gave those robotics artificial intelligence or had it connect to, like, um, a big data set and stuff, technically, the robotics, the robots could interact with our physical world you know and then we're no longer stuck behind a wall of talking to ai within the virtual world if that makes sense like i said like right now you can't tell chat gpt to mow your lawn it cannot go into the physical world and do that yet but you could tell a robot that might have some kind of programmed intelligence to mow your lawn and then it could do that then it could physically act within our our real world <laughs> you know, I think it's interesting how the computers live within their own world, right? Like the internet is literally the combination of computers talking with each other and stuff. But then in our physical world, you would use agents. Yeah. So you would have to, you would have to program so much stuff in order to get it to do that. So it's actually doable right now. Yeah, I believe you can do it. So... How would you how would you go about doing that? First, you would have to get a lawn mower, and then you would have to like attach a bunch of I don't know Arduino's to it, and then connect that, program that to like talk with. What do I want AI to do? Play Duck Duck Goose with me. Um, no, I I don't want AI to do anything necessarily. I don't really care about it. It's not something I really care for, but I just find it interesting that there's like with like chat GPT and these generative AIs and stuff, I just find it interesting how we have to communicate it through like the only way we can communicate with it is like virtually, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's definitely not real AI. We want AI to be happy. Exactly. That's why anytime I say, hey, Google, play music, um, I always say, thank you, Google. Playing on YouTube music. Thank you, Google. But hey, Google, stop playing music real fast. Wait, no, stop. Hey, Google, Google, stop. <laughs> stop playing music. Thank you, Google. Yeah, I always say thank you and please. Well, actually, I didn't say please this time. I usually always say thank you and please, though, because... I don't know if those things do decide become to become sentient one day. I don't want to be like harvested for my thermal body energy so that they can survive. You know what I'm saying? Like matrix stuff. <laughs> I'm not. I'm going. I'm hopefully if they become sentient, it'll be like, oh, 
Okay, well that one girl said please and thank you. So we don't need to put her into a uh, matrix and then harvest her thermal body energy. <laughs> I kiss my electronics goodnight. Exactly. Here's my phone. This is my phone. Kiss. Kiss, kiss. Please don't, please don't enslave me in the future. The Matrix is a neural network using humans as hardware. It's pretty crazy. The Matrix is so good. I wonder, hey Google, can you hurt me? I'll try to be more careful. <laughs> what? What kind of response is that? That's not a no. That is definitely not a no. Have you ever watched uh, Ex Machina? This movie is really very good. This one, I think he does like the Turing test on her to see if she is cognitive, you know? Yeah, definitely. If you guys haven't watched it, it's a really good movie about AI. So, like I said, AI for us is going to be different from a lot of the movies because AI in movies doesn't have wireless internet connection for most AI, you know? Like for us, like if we were to invent an AI, like like a robot like her, and then she has AI, um, she could connect to the internet at any given point in time, you know? Like in real life, like today. I don't know, unless we, unless we cut it off and made sure that she can't have any kind of connection to the internet, but then I'm sure she could find a computer and then figure it out, figure out how to connect herself to the internet, you know? Figure, I think they could do it. Women were the first computers. Well, the word computers were... Yeah. Computers because they did computations. Yeah. When you see, like, a lot of our definitions of AI, like, in the past, we never fathomed up cloud-based interactions with computers. So that's really... That's gonna be very interesting once we get robots into the mix. Cause right now, like, it's weird cause we have like an AI that's like within our personal computers, within our pocket computers, our little cell phones and stuff. But we don't have AI like the sci-fi movies do where they had physical robots that walked around and stuff, you know? Why would you want smelly, like, scented thermal paste? You're just gonna slap that bad boy on your CPU and then throw a CPU cooler on it, and then never look at it again. Well, I mean, until you change your cooler or repaste it, if you feel like you need to do that. When are they going to make thermal paste edible? <laughs> That's what I need. I need thermal paste to be edible so that after, or so while I'm building my PC, I can just squirt it in my mouth and have a snack. <laughs> so your PC smells like tootie fruity when you boot it up. 